thank you very much. Uh, recently, we just saw the, uh, the G20 in Brazil at a climate change conference, and in Durban, we just had the third, I think it's the third um, uh, climate change conference, and at all these conferences, uh, they kind of, they're kind of making the same old statement, which is like a, for them is a discovery that in fact there's a relationship between nature and culture, uh, which uh, is something that hunter-gatherer societies knew 15,000 years ago. Unfortunately, there was no internet, so they couldn't pass the knowledge down. So we have to repeat history and discover it through a very, very difficult uh, set of circumstances. Um, it doesn't matter whether it was the Eskimo, the Yanomamo Indians in South America, the Bushmen in South Africa, the Pygmies in the Ituri Forest, in the Congo, the Tuareg, who are herding their camels, or the Laps in that land, or the people on the steppes of Mongolia. They all knew something about the relationship between nature and culture. First of all, they, they knew that nature was this entity which was inscrutable and worked towards it, had its own laws, and all it wanted to really do was one thing, reproduce itself. That's all it wanted to do. And it did that in cycles. And if you got the cycles right, you were, you were at the casino. You won. The problem is, when, when the cycle finished, there was this abundance. And you had to approach this abundance with a certain amount of caution. Because when you, when you went to get it and you took it, you had to do it in such a way that it didn't disrupt the entity. And so there were all sorts of rituals recognizing that if you took this plant, this animal, or whatever it is that you took there, there was something put there as a mark of respect to try and keep this entity happy, to say that we're not abusing the entity. And the other little bit of knowledge that they developed was that while this entity is going on, the social entity is going on, and if there was conflict in the society, bad conflict, it would be picked up in this entity. And so if you had real bad trouble here, there would be a drought. There would be a pestilence. There would be locusts. There would be a tsunami. There would be a volcano. There would be something that would reflect the conflict in, in, this, in, in, in society. And so I wrote a song uh, looking because this um, in, in, uh, a lot of young men went to fight in Angola, um, uh, basically as, as, as part of a Western strategy to isolate. Uh, the, 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 it was a Cold War war. And so this war um, also brought in many players. It brought in Cubans from Cuba who landed in, um, in, in Luanda, in Angola, and joined um, the ANC and SWAPO and many other um, uh, guerrilla fighters to fight against the South Africans. And this, at the same time, we were going through a seven year drought. So I kind of made this connection. And I, and I wrote the song. Um, and it's really, uh, it's to those vanishing peoples who knew this thing that we, 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 we're understanding now. And that we have to reduce our consumption in order to keep that entity going. So it's called, it's dedicated to all the wanderers, nomads, and all the, all the, the hunter-gatherers. Um, and at this time, we had many, many mercenaries coming in to join the fight, people from all over, from Vietnam, from, uh, from all the various wars that were before, were being fought and had, had been fought previously. So it was quite a, a, quite a tense time in my country, and in effect, the whole Southern Africa. So this is the song, Digging for Some Words. Wanderers and nomads have gone to see their chieftains. Will this be the end of the rain and the birds? Who can send an emissary to speak to the seasons? For the ravens and the crows already soak up the skies. Well, I'm digging for some words beneath the stones in Zimbabwe. I'm searching for a drum song in the jungles of Zaire. I'm looking for the blood moon in the mountains of Malawi. I'm searching for the lion of Ethiopia. Darkened by the bark of the baboon, the 
frogs and the owls no longer call to the moon. The warlords have gathered, blue smoke hiss from teeth of chrome, and the pale baby trembles in the boiling blood loam. The fireplace is broken and the grinding stone too. It's million pieces flung across the plains of Africa. Each dusty fragment, a piece from which grows the memory of a dead that only you and I will know. Wanderers and nomads have gone to see their chieftains. Will this be the end of the rain and the birds? Who can send an emissary to speak to the seasons? For the ravens and the crows already soak up the skies. The seven seasoned soldiers have been summoned from Saigon. A craven walkie-talkie puts their bloodshot armor on. Some drink beer, milk, some drink drinking cola. Sheep dogs live in Otaniqua. Gun dogs in Angola. Well, I found some words beneath the stones in Zimbabwe, and I heard a distant drum song in the jungles of Zaire, and the blood moon spoke of war in the mountains of Malawi, but I never found the lion of Ethiopia. Will this be the end of the rain and the birds? Who can send an emissary to speak to the seasons? For the ravens and the crows already soak up the sky. Wow.